Hello, I'm Alan Simpson, ophthalmologist in Christchurch, and I've been prescribing eye drops for glaucoma for 35 years now. The ideal eye drop for glaucoma would work well at lowering intraocular pressure, even to 8 to 10 millimeters of mercury, ideally. It would have once daily installation for best compliance. It would have long-term persistence of effect, minimal side effects, and it would be inexpensive. Your typical eye drop coming out of a dropper bottle is going to be 50 microliters. And when you pull down your lower lid to make a conjunctival cul-de-sac to receive the eye drop, that will typically hold only 25 microliters. So half the eye drop will wash out of your eyelid to start with, and you can mop that up with a tissue or cotton swab. The eye drop that does dissolve in your tear film will then be washed away with the tear outflow pathway, whereby tears flow down the nasolacrimal duct into your nose, and any drug eye drop that's in that could potentially be absorbed across the lining of your nose and into your bloodstream. And some eye drops will cause side effects in your body by that route. And so it's worthwhile applying punctal occlusion, particularly for these eye drops, for um, the purpose of reducing that systemic absorption. And it also keeps the eye drop on your ocular surface for longer. So apply that as shown here for a minute or two is good practice. The eye drop that does get absorbed into your tear film and stays on the surface of your eye has to get inside to these areas here where the aqueous inflow and outflow pathways take place. Aqueous in the eye is typically secreted at the aqueous at the ciliary body and travels into the eye between the lens and iris and out via trabecular meshwork, canal of slim, and into blood vessels outside the eye. Trabecular meshwork applies a little bit of resistance and sets up normal pressure. And these conventional pathways, inflow and outflow, are what can be acted on by eye drops. There's also an unconventional outflow mechanism, as shown in yellow, whereby molecules can simply absorb through the uveoscleral pathway. So in the tear film, an eye drop has to be water soluble, then it has to be fat soluble to pass across the cornea, and water soluble again to work inside the anterior chamber. So it has to be all things to all people, really, an eye drop. And chemistry of the eye drop is important for this, including pH, and even a little irritation of the eye drop on your ocular surface might be useful in improving absorption. You should use eye drops as instructed. Frequency is important because the duration of effect is determined by how long they last. And therefore, the frequency is important. Time of day may be important, e.g. morning dose is best used first thing on waking because pressure is often highest in the mornings. And Timolol, for instance, may be used once a day sometimes and it's best used in the morning. You should use eye drops as per a typical day when you visit your ophthalmologist because he or she wants to see whether they're working on every other typical day. If you're still in more than one eye drop, you should wait at least five minutes between the different drops so each has a chance to be absorbed. Order doesn't matter. And if you wear contact lenses, you should wait 15 minutes before putting your lens back in to avoid damage from preservatives in the eye drop. You should report any possible side effects to your ophthalmologist. And remember that eye drops do contain preservatives to keep the bottle safe for a month of use. And sometimes these can cause mild toxicity. And there are preservative-free options in some cases. 
So a quick run through the classes of eye drops we have available, and I won't mention all the side effects. Class of first choice would be the aprostaglandin analogues, the tanoprost, travoprost, and imetoprost. They work well at lowering pressure by increasing that uveoscleral outflow. They have once daily dosing and long-term persistence of effect and minimal side effects in your body. Although they can cause some side effects around your eye, redness sometimes, increased pigmentation of skin and eyelashes in particular, and sometimes a sunken appearance of the eye, as you see in this eye here of a patient using the tanoprost in only this eye, compared to the other eye without the tanoprost. Second class, second choice class of drug would be the beta blockers, which operate on the beta receptors that increase aqueous secretion and block it, thereby reducing it. Timolol is non-selective and Pataxolol is cardioselective, meaning it's less likely to exacerbate asthma if there's any risk of that at all. It works well at lowering pressure by reducing aqueous inflow, as I said and needs a one to two times a day frequency of use. Effect may wear off over several years, however. Not many ocular side effects, but there are one or two important general side effects, such as increasing asthma, if you have a tendency to this in the first place. It's bronchospasm, reducing heart rate, that's bradycardia, and lowering blood pressure sometimes, and a few other less common things such as depression and fatigue and vivid dreams. Third class of eye drop we know about, and this is the second choice really as well, are the brimonidine group. And these work on alpha receptors to reduce aqueous secretion. And they work well as well. Um, and also increase uveoscleral outflow a little. And they're two to three times a day frequency dosing required. Do have one or two side effects on the eye, they can cause redness and irritation, and there is a reasonable rate of true allergy causing this kind of conjunctival um, inflammation, that means we have to stop the eye drop. And it can also cause headache and palpitations, dry mouth, and one or two other generalized symptoms, so some care with severe cardiovascular disease. Then the carbonic and hydrase inhibitors, drug of third choice really. These work moderately well at lowering intraocular pressure by interfering with the enzyme that increases aqueous secretion, thereby decreasing aqueous inflow. Somewhat variable response. They do require a two to three day, three times a day frequency of dosing. Um, and we have dorzolamide to use as eye drop sometimes in combination with Timolol, and we also have a systemic form in tablet, um, Diamox. Aren't too many ocular side effects, but they can cause burning and stinging, and occasionally, like all eye drops, a skin allergy. So if, if you see this kind of appearance around the eyes, in the typical eye drop spillover zone of the skin, you would recognize this as a sensitivity reaction and you need to stop that eye drop. Generalized side effects from these carbonic and hydrase inhibitors, particularly seen with the Diamox tablets, um, um, tingling and numbness of fingers, and toes, occasionally it's paresthesiae, not severe, bitter taste, lethargy, fatigue. And finally, Drugs we don't use very often, and the third choice again, the myotics or the pilocarpine group, which work quite well by increasing aqueous outflow. Um, very few systemic side effects, but they can cause some change in vision by constricting pupil, reducing night vision, and interfering with vision if you have a little bit of cataract present and very rarely may cause retinal detachment. 
that's a brief overview of eye drops and how we use them. Better eye dropping, everybody. Thank you.